Can you hear me? I can't hear you. <laughs> Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for being patient. I was just trying to finish up dinner and um it's all good. I already know. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> I'm just gonna put my water down real quick. <laughs> um, but no, how how how's your week been? It's been good. It's been um eventful, but good. <laughs> Have How's you had it? any gigs recently? Uh, I did some photography stuff that I had to shoot. I've been shooting, um, helping a friend of mine. It's a muralist shoot, uh, kind of document his um, murals around the town. He did a bunch of murals. Uh, Alexander Austin. I'm sure you've seen some of the, like Martin Luther King okay. murals. Um, Power and Light, 18th of, he's got murals all over the city. Okay. So um, I've been riding, driving around the city, taking pictures and getting video of all of them for him. Um, what else have I been doing? Yeah, I'm, I've been doing that and I've, I've, my garden project, I've just been a madman over there. <laughs> Yeah, I've been seeing your post and I'm super interested in what you're doing there. So, yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. How's your week been? It's been good. Um, not as eventful as the week before, so that's been nice. So, but just normal family stuff, um, work. And so it's nice to kind of do this. It puts a little bit of a different type of break in my day so I get to talk yeah. to people and get to know people yeah. that I've met only briefly and want to get to know more so it's really yeah. nice so, yeah I it would, and it's been really nice unexpectedly because I thought it was going to be really cloudy the last um two days and that's how you know we're from the midwest oh we're yeah the weather and I'm just like <laughs> switch up on you real quick yeah no but it was a lot better this week than I thought it was gonna than what the weather kind of reported I thought it was gonna be cloudier so I'm, I'm appreciative of that um yep. yeah so just a normal normal week but Damon yeah. so I'm Damon Lee Patterson <laughs> is, hey <laughs> <laughs> is who I'm talking to tonight um yeah, we met at the Camping, Camping World. World, yeah, set, and that was, I can't remember, because I know we went around and asked everybody, but I can't remember, was that your first commercial shoot? Um, well, is that my first commercial shoot? I've, I've done other stuff, but not in, in that capacity, so I've done more so behind the scenes kind of stuff and that my first like actual like commercial like a corporation that is shooting a commercial to advertise a company and our product so that's my first time doing that um other film stuff has been theater short films documentaries um music videos a lot of music videos um so i kind of i kind of dabble behind the scenes I, I probably more time behind the scenes really mm -hmm. but i'm trying to change that yeah how and did that feel being on the other side of it then you know i i enjoyed it i like it um it's fun it's fun to be on that side of it I was still super curious about what was happening behind the scenes. <laughs> I was like talking to the guys like, yeah, what kind of camera is that? And drone and, you know, just asking them questions where they were from and just kind of how, how they became a part of the project. I'm always interested in like how everything comes together as far as production, but I really yeah. enjoyed it. I like acting. Acting, acting is really fun. <laughs> yeah. That was my first experience too. I've never, I mean, 
I've done high school theater and then I just recently within the past three years have done improv stuff um, oh. and I dab I try to go to open mics when I can when I can um, I like but mic. but I've always won I've always been interested in film as well um that's just the production part of it all of that not just the acting but the behind the scenes the sets I've really always been into sets um okay did so in high but just, that was just like high school stuff though so this commercial the camping world commercial was the first time i've participated in anything you know of that production level i guess um and it was a lot of fun i had so much fun and yeah. i felt like we were such a i don't know the we really got set up right because the group that we had i felt like was it, it felt like a camping family all of a sudden just automatically so that was kind of funny yeah it was a real cool group diverse group it was everybody was completely different which is cool but yeah they they casted it good because it, it worked it did. I guess they did their job right. Yeah, you're right. See, I don't you. So you work more behind the scenes, I guess. Yet, yeah, actually, do you want to tell me about or tell like me about your a little bit more about yourself? We didn't really get to talk much that day because we were working. So, you know, we were kind of paired up and who we were working with. Um, but I got to watch a little bit of your content on YouTube and just seeing, uh, you know, after we became, you know, social media friends after the shoots, just seeing some of the stuff you do around town, seeing some, that we're even might know some people in the same circles. I saw recently uh, your post about soul sessions. So that oh, was, yeah. I've been to that one time and I loved it. And I wish, I could, I wish my job could just be going to these things and talking about them just so I could have an excuse why I have to go to it all the time. Sorry, kids. I've got to go to the event. Like it's for work, but right. yeah. <laughs> so I just want to hear, yeah, I want to hear, um, kind of, I guess what you would describe your, uh, work as and okay. a little bit about yourself where you grew up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I am. Born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I come from a musical family. A lot of my family um, are musicians and were musicians. I did not immediately gravitate to that because um, it was just normal. Everybody was a musician. So I started branching and doing different stuff. So I dabbled in you know, martial arts and I, I did play the trumpet at one time and then I played the clarinet early, like like elementary school early. And then um I eventually got into acting, more so theater. I didn't get into film until later, uh maybe in my well, so it started out as theater. So I started doing plays. I went to um, Purcell Performing Arts Academy. And the way that they set Purcell up is you have a major and then you have minors. So my major was acting and directing. And then I switched my minor from, that's a clock, a bird clock. Um, <laughs> so I switched my minor from, I think I, I, I switched, I can't even remember now, but I went from set design, so technical theater, where we build sets and learn lighting and just just everything behind the scenes, being a crew, being part of the crew. And then I switched to costume and design and fashion. I think I switched back. But um, my major was always acting. That's kind of where, I mean, there's a prelude to that, because prior to that, I started doing some community theater um, where... 
I mean, it was really interesting. The plays were kind of community based, or I get it was called theater with a met a message. So it was okay. really inspirational plays about inner city kids trying to make it out of the hood. It was stuff like that. And okay. um that kind of set me up for like taking it more serious and going to Pacel. And then I started, I, I mean, I got really serious there. And the teacher there was like a classic, like train from Stanislavski and Uta Hagen and, you know, really classical theater stuff. So she would have us doing Shakespeare and, and stuff like that. And that kind of really is where I really sunk my teeth into acting and and, you know, I got exposed to doing musicals and the school would partner with outside production companies like Theater League or if um, film productions would come to the city and film, they would use the students, the actors from the class to, you know, take on um, smaller roles. Some, A few people did get like kind of speaking roles or smaller roles but okay. um that really just kind of opened me up to the world of of acting and theater and and musicals and again I did not I, I didn't really like doing music for a long time which is funny because I love doing music now but I, I think I was just being rebellious because my family did music and um <laughs> So you're yeah. like, I'm going to stick to the acting and the film and leave the music part alone. Yeah, because it's like I, I wanted to be different than what mm -hmm. everybody. And <laughs> forge your own path. <laughs> yeah, I tried to, but it, it eventually came back around. Um, one I'm of the. For us all, so. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got tricked into it. Um, I was doing a play while well, I auditioned for a play in this theater group called uh, Egypt experimental group young people's theater was by a lovely lady and mentor uh, named natasha brown and i auditioned to just do acting but she was like she 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 figured out a way to make it to where well if we were gonna act we had to sing and then that just kind of it started there where i was like oh i kind of got more comfortable i guess with doing music and then I just kind of outside of that I started dabbling around with um production like music production and started teaching myself piano and and how to um kind of compose in the programs and record and um that put me on a whole little journey I did some self-produced uh, music and I caught myself going on a little tour and literally I just like caught a greyhound and started going out. Oh, wow. Town. What and, was um, the, your favorite city you went to during that tour? Did you go within Kansas and Missouri or what how what did that look like? Uh, and how I old was, were you during that time? I was 23. Okay. So you were out of high school. So at this point you um you were at, at Paseo and then you joined that the Egypt group and this is where you're out of high school are you just working and doing these uh, other projects or are you um going think, to like college or anything like that or no I you know I did not go to college I, I think I, I went to um <laughs> no it's okay I went to um I went to Penn Valley for about two weeks. <laughs> and then I just was like, eh, no. It's rough. And, uh, it's, yeah, it, it can be really rough if you know you don't have all the right support in place. Um, and even then it's really tough. So it's just a tough time. But I'm a self, so I'm a self-learner and I and I'm Sometimes it's hard for me to be in structured settings because I like to just move at my own pace. And I didn't I didn't like my professors and stuff. So I just left. Yeah. And um... no, I agree. It was tough <laughs> for me in that sense too. the same issues I faced um, during 
you know, uh, grade school and uh, middle school and elementary in terms of learning were the same issues I faced uh, in college and I didn't know how to address them. So, um, and it wasn't really the place. Uh, I mean, I don't know about now. I have no idea now, but I don't have much of a, a you know, there's a lot, I don't know. Anyways, that's a different conversation, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so you, um, are in the group and um yeah so I'm, I'm in the group you're starting to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and you're in your 20s 23 yep I'm I'm like 20 uh, it started pre 23 but by that time I had decided that I was going to make a an album you know and I started I was teaching myself how to make it how to record um you know how to just really arrange and put songs together and how to make an album cover, <laughs> how to do graphic design, how to get CDs duplicated. I was just like learning all these things. And I put together 23 songs because I was 23. And um, okay. <laughs> a, a lot of people tell me it was way too many, but I didn't, I'm like, whatever, you know, <laughs> just did it. Um, it was an album called Thirsty Water. And I think I made, um, I got, what was like 500 initial CDs duplicated. And this is during the MySpace days. Okay. So, <laughs> did you so, make a digital format to put on your MySpace page? I did. I had a digital, yes. digital format. And then I had jewel case CDs because I was told that it you want to be taken serious, you had to have a jewel case CD with a book okay. edition and a cover. So I did that, figured it out. And <laughs> um, I took those CDs and I was on MySpace networking with people in other cities. So I was meeting people in Chicago, Austin, Texas. Austin, yeah. well, in Chicago big. too, yeah, great cities. <laughs> so I I started selling CDs in, in Kansas City and I made enough to get Greyhound a uh, bus ticket. <laughs> and I started catching the bus to different cities and staying at strangers' houses and going to open mics and selling CDs. <laughs> <laughs> that oh was, my gosh that's literally what I did and I I did not tell my family completely what I was doing I just oh my god <laughs> they would have freaked out if they really knew that I was just uh, and your do you I mean what's your going. uh family sit I mean what does your family look like um do you have siblings parent what is yeah it? I um I'm the youngest I have an older brother and an older sister okay uh, um mom um uncles, grandmothers, that kind of thing. Okay. Some people have okay. passed by, they've passed. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. uh, they didn't know that I was like okay. meet, meeting people yeah. on the internet, going to stay with them and to sell CDs yeah. and perform. I'm like, yeah, my friend, I know I'm in, you know. Listen, but. I, my <laughs> first, like the, when Facebook was just coming out and it was just for college students and with MySpace too, like that, you know, it was, it was a, a time of, I'm not saying it was the, the safest, but I definitely met a lot of people because I was also a very curious person, adventure. I love meeting new people. So mm -hmm. I met strangers. <laughs> I mean, yeah. um, you know, one, my first, I've been married twice and my first husband, I essentially met that group of friends through Facebook because um, I was going to Johnson County Community College. And so I was in that Facebook group because at that point you could only be friends with the people from your college even. So yeah. I, I think, yeah, you could only get on there if you mm -hmm. had a college if email. You had or a college, yeah. And then they opened it up to work and then, well, here we are. But I met like a whole group of people that eventually one of those people changed my, you know, or put a, you know, check mark of a you know big event in my life you know yeah <laughs> from Facebook so it's that's it was definitely happening so but yeah my mom also didn't always know that I was meeting these friends or how that I met these friends from the internet so yeah what's well, normal now right like 
Well, yeah, especially with kind of normal, like you, like you that. Meet people and yeah. You, but you, I guess it's no different than meeting somebody at the bar or at you know whatever, and then you know hanging out. You still know that person, I guess, too. So you don't really don't really know them. It starts but, out on your on in the comments and the timeline. Yeah. You move to the inbox. And then the inbox moves to your phone. And then eventually <laughs> phone, you meet in person, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Black Planet yeah. before that, right? Do you remember Black Planet? <laughs> no, I wasn't on Telling that my one. age. <laughs> no, I, re I remember it. I just, I don't, I wasn't on that one. Um, it, it wasn't really dynamic. I mean, it was just like, I think it was like, you could say something and have some pictures and there were chat rooms i think okay i definitely was but, an AOL chat but AOL chat. myspace destroyed black planet and then facebook destroyed myspace <laughs> or See, took i missed the black planet phase completely i think i i think i completely missed that because we didn't even get a computer until i was in high school so yeah, we were I think a late was still, um, I think that was still well, you know what's funny is at that because that was dial up still at that time, right? Mm -hmm. the, um yeah. the AOL disc and stuff yeah. like that. If you were on the internet, if you were on, on the internet, if you were using the internet, you couldn't get a phone call. <laughs> yeah, they but, would do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a little thing when you get in online. <laughs> yeah yeah that's okay old school. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so sorry i went no, on that's okay. there about well, <laughs> i'll piggyback so that phase you know i was networking with people on myspace it was people who you know through the internet they felt like kindred spirits you know through the internet you know and we eventually would talk on the phone and they were musicians and I would listen to their music and they would listen to mine and they say hey I know these you know studios you should come here and record or um I know some places you can perform and so it felt safe it felt all right it felt like you know I mean these are people that were my age and they looked um fairly normal whatever normal is yeah <laughs> it didn't seem dangerous to me and I like meeting people and, and networking and yeah so I did that and jumped around and I went and performed and met a whole bunch of people and and met more people while I was out of town and some of those people became lifelong friends and um yeah and then I caught a train to I think I went from Minnesota to Chicago, Minnesota, Chicago, then back here for a minute, then Oklahoma, then Austin. So it, it wasn't a whole bunch of cities, but it was like a mini. I thought I was on tour. I was like, I am on tour. I, I am you were on a Midwest tour. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm performing and I got CDs for sale and I'm meeting new. Uh, musical family around the country <laughs> so, I was on, <laughs> so i was on tour <laughs> but yeah that was that was 23 i was 23 around that time 23 24 23 and how how old are you now and i don't know if that i don't know how anybody ever everybody takes that question differently so i don't know i'm always hesitant to ask but how old are you <laughs> i am currently 40 40 okay okay so all right so I don't feel like it but I'm 40 that's good. yeah <laughs> good you don't <laughs> eternally I mean, like... 27 oh okay okay well then so how long did the tour last and how long or how long did that phase of life I guess last where you were doing that and and I was, what I was, did that for just a couple of years, like maybe one or two years of just, just bouncing around. And I would come back and go back and went to, out to California for a little while and came back. Um, yeah. So I, 
a couple of years and then I came back and I started um open mics I started doing open mics I started um I started hosting open mics and I actually I didn't perform as much when I started doing that because I was facilitating but I would I would pop in every once in a while and and perform so I you know I started that's what it was I started I was looking for um, band members because I wanted to do my music live. And at first I tried like look, putting ads on like Craigslist and stuff, looking for band yeah. members. It, just, it didn't work out. So I, I answered started. one of those ads. I drove to Pittsburgh, Kansas. This is another one my mom doesn't know. <laughs> and I, because they were looking for a singer and I, and it was a complete waste of time. And I'm glad I'm alive also. Yeah, you drove. But I auditioned for it too. Like, it's so weird. I auditioned for this person who was younger than me, I came to realize. <laughs> like, I was just like, I did you think Wonder that was Wonder like, Wonder did you think that was me. like it? Like, you're like, this is it. I am driving. To no, I to just it. thought. I thought honestly at that point, like what I was really hoping for is just maybe like song night at a bar or something. Like I didn't think it was going to be anything more than maybe that. That was like a big hope out yeah. of the situation. But then when I got there, they were younger than me and uh, and wasn't interested in my the songs I wrote. I was I remember being very crushed and disappointed about that because. Uh -oh. He was like, oh, these are really good. And I was like, yeah. So you want to try it out or, you know, like sing it, blah, 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 whatever. And then it's just like, yeah. And then like his drug dealer came over and then he bought pot. And then I was just like, well, I guess I'm going to drive two hours back home and never see you again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Fun. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> I've had some of those though, like things you think are one thing and then they Yeah. It's a funny story now because I'm just like, why I sang a song over I auditioned just to go drive two hours to do nothing. And it so it's funny now when I think about it. And this kid was yeah. a teenager and I was in my twenties. I'm just like That's hilarious. I don't know what's gonna happen here, but <laughs> like, it's like mom, this lady's coming over to audition for me. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> much <laughs> what happened <laughs> but anyways <laughs> that's hilarious um what else oh yeah so i i had started doing the open mics because i was looking for band members i wanted to do live music and i i started a band called funk babies where we did it was it was basically like funk jams mixed with me freestyling and then sprinkled with songs from my album. Really awesome musicians. And remember, I started the open mic to find musicians. Yes. But the open mic grew and I couldn't stop it. So I didn't stop it. And that went on for some years. Um, I started in one building. Uh, it was called the Chameleon Theater. It was ran by uh, Hugh Merrill, a professor from the Art Institute. Um, he's no longer with us. But um, he let me use the space to have these open mics until it grew too big. And then I had to move it. I was, I was going to stop it. And then Cheryl Kimmy... Um, who was with the uh, French festival, she had an office there and she's like, saw me trying to stop it. And she's like, no, don't stop it. This is a good thing. Cause I was like, it's too big. I'm just gonna stop. I got the band, I'm good. And she's like, no, don't stop it. Keep going. So I ended up, um, I started renting out places to do the open mics. Um, I did that for a while and it just kept growing and you know, it, there were comedians, there were poets, and there were singers, and there were rappers, and there were dancers, and it just turned into this really magical thing. And then eventually, I ended up get, um, finding a building because I was like, well, I'm renting 
space because I was doing it every week, every Tuesday, seven to eleven. Okay. And, um, so I was paying like two hundred something dollars to rent places every week, and I did the math, and I was like, well, I could just rent a building and do it like all the time. So we did that, and I got a building on Eighteenth and Trues. And then that turned into something else. It was like, well, there were open mics and there were parties. And then uh, Paula Lang uh, came and she started doing um, ballet, tap and jazz classes. And uh, Exo Capoeira started teaching capoeira and gymnastics and martial arts. So it was all these different wow. classes and workshops and open mics and poetry events and parties and murals and that that lasted for a while and then that ended and I did some stuff at a it was it used to be a bank on 18th and Grand where the uh Church of Scientology's building so pre them having that building before they were done with it I got in there and started doing events and stuff for a little while and um arts events and parties and just kind of jumped around and and then I just kind of started doing um creating spaces out of these buildings like taking almost pretty much abandoned buildings and fixing them up and putting doing murals and green screen and dance stuff. so I just started creating out of these spaces kind of got addicted to it and, um, you know, just facilitating. I, at that point, I was really not performing at all. I was just facilitating. Like I started getting into kind of local arts promoting, um, did the arts hop. It was like a kind of first Fridays on truce for a little while. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, started this, um, it was like a circus arts boy performance group with like fire spinners and and that oh, wow. uh, okay. Sarah Misconception of Vibe Tribe KC and kind of like a offshoot of like the rave scene mixed with circus arts and boy that kind of okay. thing and we did that for a while and and I was simultaneously doing um like photography and and um filmmaking so I was jumping around I've been jumping around for a while um artistically i think that <laughs> uh nor normal for every artist's journey i would say <laughs> like um and i i say that in a i guess loose way where i, I do think that everybody has something creative in them so um i agree so I don't mean like we're just artists. I don't mean that when I say that. I I, I apply that to everybody, but um some no, people embrace it more. Everyone has it, but some people embrace it more. It's, it's yeah, like, yeah. And I think it's an important part of every human to embrace. So yeah. But um I think when you start to embrace it, it's a lifelong kind of uh exploration. So and um you don't ever know where you're going to end up with them. That's kind of the exciting part. And also that's the part that can be scary because if you're also a person who is goal oriented, then you want to have these creative ideas be you know executed. And, and sometimes yeah. things come that you didn't plan for. Sometimes you are able to execute things and that feels really freaking good. But sometimes things come that are unexpected and you don't ever maybe get to do that other thing but true um, anyways <laughs> so that happens a lot you yeah know, something yeah. kind of comes like you may be looking at this and working on this thing and then something comes and said no you you're supposed to do this now you know yeah. okay well i guess we're doing that <laughs> well and specifically in acting and in film and and singing and and anything like that they all can relate to each other and and because the worlds collide all the time you know so it's easy to find yourself if you're open to learning and you like you said want to if you're somebody who embraces learning other parts of a job of yeah. an art then you will find yourself in those other areas behind the scenes in front of the camera you know doing the singing running 
the show. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. What are your current projects now? So did you do that for like you kind of just created for quite some time and then you said you're still kind of doing that now. So what projects um do you I have did now? that for a while mm -hmm. and I guess the most consistent thing has been um photography videography uh photography editing video editing so those things have been kind of the core or mainstay from the different arts um that i guess have really i guess they've really taken care of me in a way um because they, they've just been the most consistent things and probably what I'm most comfortable with out of the the different arts. So I've, I've did those all the way through simultaneously, even when the other things ended, I kept doing those. Okay. Um, and then I did some writing here and there and did some self-publishing, put out another self-published um album and i did a documentary um that was kind of a a high point um from all the years of um just experimenting with art and the different genres and the different types of artists um in different places i started seeing kind of a common theme which was um, art was really powerful and that it was changing people's lives in a positive way. It was changing um, people, it was changing neighborhoods, it was changing cities. So I started seeing that and then, you know, the light bulb goes off. I said, well, oh, I should do a documentary about this. And so I um, did a documentary called Art Saved My Life. And um, yeah, I went in I, guerrilla style. I, I started really zeroing in on what is a documentary and what does it take to do a documentary? What makes a good documentary? E even to the technical aspects, like what are the best cameras or lenses and mm -hmm. lighting set up and microphones. And I would talk to different mentors, uh, Stinson McClendon, I would pick his brain all the time. He's a, a OG veteran filmmaker that I would go and sit with and he would school me on stuff and we would talk for a while. But I shot that and it did really good and was impactful and it put me into a lot of different spaces. Like I ended up talking at colleges and uh, about the power of art and art therapy conferences and it just wow. kind of opened up a different world you know like what am I doing here I'm like but you know I just talked about why I did it and the power of art and and then I kind of after that it was I, I maybe I went into kind of a cocoonish maybe less public stage where it was a lot of just solo work or quiet collaborations and um kind of inner inner journeys and and learning myself in different aspects of like it was always working on something but maybe it wasn't as public you know it was just right on stuff okay. and then um still photography and filmmaking was still there I was still doing that uh fast forward um because you asked me what am I working on now right yeah yeah so mm -hmm. Yeah, currently, my newest, um, we'll call it my newest obsession, okay. uh, <laughs> is I'm doing a garden project, um, what's a kind of art, nature fusion, um, rooted in region, it's an eco art garden, so the idea is to, I, well, out here, let me give you a little backstory, I've always been interested and engaged with nature since a child so it's kind of full circle and I've always been growing here and there throughout all those different spaces there was always something growing 
And this time that's front and center. You know, it's it's not in a building, it's on the land. So it's that's the center of it is is the land and learning to be a conservationist and a steward of the earth. So learning what makes good soil, good soil, what makes bad soil, bad soil. How do you make bad soil, good soil? What makes a tree healthy? What makes a plant healthy? What makes mm -hmm. water healthy? What makes it not healthy? What are the things that we can do to make the environment better? So there's a, there's a large conservation um, element to it that's a part of it. And of course, gardening and growing, growing food. I'm very interested in, in just being a champion of that and projecting that to people that like encouraging and inspiring other people to grow food and put their hands in the soil because mm -hmm. uh, it's really fascinating and awesome. And I think like seeds is like this alien technology or something. Where it's like it's so cool. No, I'm with you. I <laughs> love, yeah, I, um, I, I saw that. And so I, I appreciate the backstory because it, and I'm excited to see what your what what comes of it. Are you filming the process as well? Or are you? Um... I'm I'm documenting. So I'm just moving out of logistics as far as uh, paperwork and legalities. I'm just moving out of that phase. So I'm just starting to actually be on the land and physically do things. So yeah, I'm starting to take pictures and and do video. Um, now that that the legalities and logistics right. are, are done and, and and paperwork basically yeah so I <laughs> want to document the process um, and I'm still figuring out exactly how to do that but yes yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. a lot of a lot of documentation is going to be happening yeah, yeah. I want to bring back some of those old elements from the past chapters but I want it to be outdoors. So right. think tiny desks in the woods. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like that. <laughs> or on the land. Like you said, it's like full circle. So everything that you've worked on in the past, you know, um, you're now able to like that. There is something about that. I was actually just telling my partner this today because we he he loves cars and he works on cars and he was showing me the progress that he's made on his car so far. And I love seeing the pictures and stuff like that. I was asking questions, but like I was telling him that I that is such a I could relate to it, but on a different level because my my stuff is creative so it's usually digital or it's written down or so i and i and i piece piece those things together like a like a set you know i i'll have a thought and then you know i will have to go work that thought out at an open mic and then you know if i can if not then i have to most of the time i'm i'm sitting here trying to have it like work it out at home or just throughout my daily life you know and 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 that puzzle becomes this full thing but it's a more conceptual thing versus a physical yeah tangible thing you can touch see feel you know yeah. and so it's really cool back you know in relating to the garden like you said to have that and see that have that tangible growth right there in front of you so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The art, art of the nature fusion. That's what I, yes. that's the, <laughs> the easiest way for me to explain it is, um, I mean, I, it's so funny because I feel like nature doesn't need us. Like nature is nature and it does what nature does, right? Without humans. So part of it is getting out of the way and removing what is unnatural or foreign. Um, and it, it does it by itself, you know, the soil is soil, 
uh, microorganisms do what they do in the soil and, and everything's interconnected, the fungi and the rain and the sun and the moon and the, the different types of moons and everything. Mm -hmm. It's all connected and interrelated and it just does its thing. So part of it is for me, I guess, and it's, it's, it's kind of an experiment, you know, it's, um, like art, like nature already is art, you know, and I'm finding ways to show that. And, um, yeah, like, I guess I'm just really fascinated with nature and I want other people to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it. it goes back to that kind of human thing that we were talking about earlier. I think you should want to be interested in um, the earth and um, I think you should want to be interested in, in that. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's a part of um, our livelihood. It's a part of um, the, it's just amazing to think of the way our bodies function and the way the earth functions. There's, um, you know, again, another conversation for probably another podcast, but, you know, um, it's all interconnected. Yeah, we're interconnected and, uh, we function very similar, similarly. Um, and so anyways, but, um, no, I, I also wanted to ask you more about the, I did want to ask more about your documentary because something that, and that like relates to the garden as well. So something you mentioned is that you went to different conferences and people became really interested in it because of um, the ways you were showing how art was impacting different communities. And I feel like nature can do the same thing for people. It did it for me. I had similar experience as a young kid. I loved being outside. I felt most comfortable and I always felt uh, closest to God, actually, when I was outside, um, you very know, just so. on my own, even, you know, so I had a very uh, loving relationship, you know, in that way with nature. And I loved being outside. And um, I think it can be very comforting, you know, um, for different types of communities. You know, I I grew up uh, in Kansas, Missouri too, mainly Kansas on the Kansas side. I went to uh, Harmon and then I, my last two years, but I went to North, my Shawnee Mission North, my first two years. So grew up kind of in the little bit same area, but I went to, I, it, I think that for where I grew up and what helped me was art. I, so that's what I related mostly to that. So how do you um, feel like the, how, I guess my question is, how do you, you know, feel like art should be incorporated and nature should be incorporated in like our communities more, you know, these types of projects for sure. But, you know, what, if you I could, see that if I could, yeah, like if you could implement something in, you know, a school or a community, you know, what I just think implementing more programs for sure, but sometimes yeah. that can get filled, that can also feel like um, <laughs> a box too, you know, so yeah. it's a hard question because I do think we need to implement this more in, in kids' lives, um, I, especially well, kids who struggle. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I think like, I mean, it's, it's basically, I think that one, all institutions of education should have a nature, like a heavy nature element. Like there should be a garden, like at every school and kids, that, that should be a part of the curriculum. I believe that is just as important as any of the subjects um we we exist because of nature we are we are sustained 
because of nature. So I think every child should be familiar with how to grow things in the soil, how to take care of the earth, how to be stewards. That should be like education 101. I, mm -hmm. I believe that not an extracurricular activity. You know, it should be like every school should have some type of growing curriculum, environmental stewardship uh, curriculum. That, I, I, I believe that. I believe that yeah. the education system should have it. And I think families should yeah. also, if possible, because I know every every living situation is different, like the space that you have in a house mm -hmm. or an apartment. Sometimes. When you're in the city, you know, like I live in the city right now, even, and it's, I mean, we do have some, we definitely have space for a, a, a small garden, you know, and nowadays, thankfully with technology, you can make really, really, really small gardens, you know, so, vertical. but yeah, yeah so vertical. vertical and so there's a lot of options, but yeah, it's just, a, it's one of those, um, I guess, questions that it's, it's such a big question because I, like growing big questions. Up, <laughs> I did see how much those two things impacted my life, you know, and I see how it impacts other people's lives. And um, like you, I, I enjoy relating to, I, I find myself finding other people who have a similar, you know, history and didn't even know, and we didn't even know that, you know, because right. there's just that kind of, I think, kinship, you know, so, but. I, you know, and I'm, to answer that further too, it's like, nature and when I say nature I just mean everything that's not us <laughs> like um not us uh <laughs> I didn't is that it, it, <laughs> it should be right I just, it sounds scary <laughs> um yeah I think like it's the common denominator right like it's the common like that's like that's what we what we live in, what we live on, mm -hmm. which is which is ironic because the thing that we live in and live on that we need to survive and sustain us, so many people are unaware of. Yeah. Are like don't really know about it. Like that's so yeah. strange, right? Like something that's so including yeah. myself like I you know I feel like I try to know as much as I can but I know there are a ton of things I don't know you know so right but I mean to answer that I, I think that it should be incorporated into our lives more in in yeah. institutions and at home and small ways matter like just mm -hmm. just having a single plant around mm -hmm. you know does something and 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 taking care of that living um i'll say being mm -hmm. <laughs> um does something you know does yeah. something to you, your awareness and just just the the caretaking of 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 a life of something does something and learning how to i think creates pathways for empathy and all sorts of things um the other part of that um, that you asked, it was two parts to that. Yes, question. <laughs> thank I you. Feel, yeah, I, I feel the same way about art. <laughs> I feel the exact same way. Like there should there should never be an educational education institution that doesn't have creative something creative going on. Like there should always be a core part of every institution like should have just creativity some type of creativity because I feel like I feel like art and creativity kind of helps unlock like human potential mm -hmm. or something like it helps just just the exercise like okay there's art for just creating for art's sake and then there's art to make money right that's kind of like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they they're not the Virtual same art. thing and they kind of <laughs> are the same thing, but like at the core, 
just the act of making something or self-expression. I think um, every child for sure should be engaged in creativity. I think it's like, it's more important than everything because like yeah. everything comes from that, you know, like, like the whole world that we've made so far came from somebody's imagination, right? Like this was, this was all imagined. <laughs> so exercising those um, attributes of creativity, I think are just important again. So I'll say, I also feel that creativity should be a part of all educational institutions. And I think that it's always weird to say like, like I'm not a parent, so it's always weird to say what parents should do, right? Like, oh well, you're yeah, not a parent, I'll be telling people well, you ain't yeah, got a kid. Gotcha. <laughs> but I, you know, like, however, people can um, expose their kids to creativity. I think is I agree to what they'll beneficial. tolerate too, because you know, kids are like my kids. Um, well, my daughter like loves musical, but I'm an artistic person, so it comes a little more naturally for me to, you know. Like yeah. I said, I think everybody is, but if you expose yourself to it, it's kind of like patterns and habits. I mean, if you start to develop the habit or pattern of just writing every day or just doing something every day like that, then you'll develop, a, you know, um, you'll find where it is that you fall in, in your yeah. creative self, you know, so, but I, and I really like what you said and it is, it, I kind of, I think we did answer the question because it's always such a more, much simpler answer than, than what I'm making it to be. Like life is so simple and, and, and we want to make it complicated, but what you do at home. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what you do at home, what that's how we can develop creativity that will then spread out because it's what we do in that's going to, you know, go yeah. out around us so yeah I, I agree just trying to find ways to do that at home and whatever that is and it 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 also is um it's self-expression and going back to it helps process emotions you know it helps us process emotions and um very much so so therapy, yeah me mental health mental <laughs> health hashtag therapy but <laughs> <laughs> so no, I really appreciate that. And I hope you, um, and that's why I love YouTube because my kids have access to certain things that is a, you know appropriate for them, but there's a lot of useful things on there that I am not knowledgeable about that they oh, yeah. can learn about and, you know, yeah, within their age range, you know, but like, YouTube it's really is nice. fantastic yeah. for learning. Like mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm constantly learning from things like YouTube, like if I'm yeah. researching something that I don't know how to do or something, I mean, you can- YouTube University, so. <laughs> yep, find a tutorial, pause it, rewind exactly. it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, for sure. Well, I hope that you um, put, I, I can't wait to see what you put together for the garden. And what are some ways um so a couple couple questions here what how can people follow you and you know um find your documentary work and i'll post all the links too but just i guess yeah how can people you know follow you and find your content and are there any ways to get involved with the garden and what are those if so okay multi-part questions um yeah my favorite well, <laughs> so the links that you post those because I think I sent you a link tree with yes I think I had let me let me yes. think okay I'll make sure I'll go back over that link tree and make sure that I put okay. all the I links. have that one yeah I do have but I'll, that. I'll update it and make sure that uh, everything you just said is on there okay. so if people want to um, get to the documentary mm -hmm. they can do that and then I'll make sure I, I have the um, the website for the garden on there so people can um, get involved. Um, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of ways that people can get involved. People can, people can, um, can share their expertise. 
because I'm still learning. We're all still learning. People can share their experiences, their expertise, um, knowledge. Um, people can volunteer. Um, people can tell other people about it. Um, people can donate supplies. Um, I just made like a Amazon wish list for, I just started it. Amazon okay. wish list for, um, you know, stuff that'll be needed at the garden. Um, cause we're, we're right in the beginning stages of it. So we're literally just getting boots on the ground. Uh, yeah. so, and that, that site is rooted and reaching dot org and i'll okay. make sure that that's um on the link tree i'll make sure that that's okay. on there and cool. uh i'm i'm really open people can just reach out and talk to me ask me stuff tell me stuff like whatever <laughs> i'm super open to communicating with people i'm not afraid of strangers so <laughs> don't be shy Are you sure <laughs> 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 well <laughs> that just made me think of that movie did, uh scream you know from the 90s like, well some people i mean and, and, is like <laughs> that's like the uh question that the murderer asks um that was sydney prescott i think or no are you, are you, are you afraid you, of strangers <laughs> no are you afraid of the dark that's what it was yeah oh are you afraid of the I dark think i could be totally wrong about that Anyway, <laughs> it don't have feels. <laughs> it was yeah, but um, and then the other there was another um, oh yes, the group. If people are interested about um, posting auditions, or um, yeah, mainly and and there's rules to that people so read the rules and but uh yeah you have a uh you're you have uh part of running a facebook group um and uh, you want actors speak on and that? filmmakers in kansas city yeah. um yeah so that group is man it's it's kind of got a life of its own it's about thirteen thousand people in there and they're all people in the filmmaking and theater community. Um, so one, if you're looking to get involved in things, it's a great place to just kind of jump in. Two, if you have something going on as far as a theatrical or film or commercial music video production or anything, it's a great place to find other people um, to get involved in there. And uh, yeah, most people in there are pretty friendly and straightforward. I don't have to do a whole lot of moderating. <laughs> um, Sometimes I do. I have a couple of cops in there. I mean, not they're not cops, but they're like, <laughs> there's a couple of people in there that just report everything. Oh, and, okay. And sometimes they report things that are not like they shouldn't be reported. Like, well, why nah. not? Report that you're like They're there's like one a guy that reports Roberta. everything and I'm like why is this guy <laughs> always reporting stuff like I just think of him like a group cop so I don't he's kind of cool to have around because he just he like filters everything because every now and there there's that one where you're like you know what you were right about that one <laughs> yeah I mean there's some stuff that's like yeah we're not doing that yeah you know but. of course it's it's the internet so it's some weird yeah. stuff out there that are doing some there were weird stuff. weird people in the phone book so there we go around <laughs> that's some like weird people went and took an ad out in the phone book that's yeah funny. there was like the back <laughs> the back of the phone book was the most interesting part but <laughs> that's funny huh that's still around the back of the internet <laughs> yes <laughs> that's what we're going to call them back of the internet people but <laughs> yeah, back page <laughs> but <laughs> well, I don't want to keep you too late. It's getting close to pass. It's already past my bedtime. And also my screensaver um, has decided to change three times in the last minute, but that's okay. <laughs> I had a Thank pleasure you. talking to you and getting to know you a little bit more and all. Hey, um, thanks yeah. for having me. Oh, You're welcome. You're yeah, welcome. Cool. Thank you so much, Damon. 
Right. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye.